Luchasaurus egg in game four. What about tonight? Also, Rison Clark, DeChambeau on trophy, Rory on Zoom. <laughs> And Albanians on spaghetti. No! Mamma mia! No! Accidente! Ah! Oh, Greatest crime ever committed by opposing fans. Ever. Mama Reality can't be happy. Tonight, game five, Mavs try to stave after staving. Celtics try to rebound after that walkover in game four. Here's Jason Tatum. We would love to win tomorrow more than anything. But if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. It's okay to smile during wars. Mmm. A moment of zen from Tatum there. Around the horn to George Sedan on how you hear that, how you see any potential carryover from game four, and how you view Boston with the championship within reach. Tony, I like the group as a collective is doing that. And Jason Tatum had an interview with our Malika Andrews recently as well when he was asked about, you know, all the folks talking about him needing to win this championship. And he said, look, for various reasons, people keep telling me that I need to win this championship. And what I want to say to those people is, yes, I, I want to win that championship probably 10 or 100 times more than you do. So these guys want to win, and they, they just feel like, hey, that's another good team on the other side. And if we can control our business, we can be in these games with them. I remember specifically being in the huddle for game three when things got really tight. And Jalen Brown, who's been an incredible leader in these huddles, along with Al Horford, telling the guys as things got tight and it was a three-point game or whatnot, and he said, guys, we just need to play defense. We need to calm down. This is where we graduate. And that was game three, a turning point in the series, mm -hmm. clearly, as they took a 3-0 lead. So I think these guys are calm. They know they can win this series, but they want to show the proper amount of respect okay. to the other side. Okay, so psyche-wise, all good from Sedano on Boston. Isola, how'd you hear Tatum? Yeah, if they graduated, they got, they got a big F for game four. That, there's no doubt about it. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what Jason Tatum says. For me, it's about what Joe Missoula is telling them. And Joe Missoula knows there's a chance that Przingis may not play. Remember, he didn't play in game three. They fell behind by 13 points. Doesn't play in game four. They got absolutely blown out. And let's remember, mm. between games three and four, Luka Doncic was getting called out by everyone, and rightfully so for his defense, the complaining to the referees. He was locked in in game four, especially on the defensive end. You need your leaders in moments like this. If Dallas is going to win, they're going to need a huge effort. From Luka Doncic, this will be the toughest game of the year for them to, for them to win. But I still think they have the best player in the series. That's why I give them a. Oh, here team. we go now. All right. So we talked about the psyche of Boston, Israel. You can go there as well. But as we look forward to Game Five tonight, any carryover from what we saw Friday night in the way Boston laid that egg and the way Dallas came back. Well, I'll start with Tatum here. And look, I'm all about having perspective on things, on life and sports, etc. Not right here, not out loud. We know it's not going to be the end of the world if you don't win game five. We know that. But I don't want to hear that from my main player, my leader, the guy who, when things are tight, we're supposed to turn to you. And frankly, so far, you have not been that player yet. So I would rather, uh, and maybe this is my bias coming through, but I would rather have somebody like Jimmy Butler give me empty guarantees every single time because I know hit where his mentality is versus Jason Tatum, who just came off of that game four performance with his team. So we'll see how that carries over. I don't think it's going to mean much. What I do think is they have a history of losing big games in Boston. Lost a game, you know, game seven last year. And so if you think about any of these other Dallas Mavericks players, a P.J. Washington here, another maybe Tim Hardaway uh, boost of a shooting performance, anybody comes up and surprises the Mavericks, along with Luka and Kyrie performing the way they should in this game, they could lose this game. They could lose this game very easily, so that I want to hear the exact opposite. Okay, well, here we go. Now I'm hearing two panelists who's, who are leaning, it seems like, towards Dallas, suggesting there's a path to victory here. David, how'd you hear Tatum? How do you view Boston going into tonight? I, I, I actually do want to go back to that Jalen Brown quote again that, that Zidano mentioned where he said, we graduated, and I'm wondering... Who do they actually graduate into? Because they look like the exact same Boston Celtics team that blows leads, that comes up and doesn't show up for these big games, that lost to Miami and lost to Golden State in series that they probably should have won. What I'm well, seeing... They, they, they had won 10 straight going into Friday night's game, David Dennis Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they have been winning those, but they've been playing worse teams. That's the thing. They they are the same Celtics team. They just have the benefit of playing teams that are not nearly oh, as good as them, which is why they're going to win this series. Here we go. They're beating the people who are in front of them, including a Dallas Mavericks squad that's not as good as them. So they can afford take- to have these stinker games and miss a whole bunch of shots in game two and blow leads in game one and game three. They're going to win tonight because they're simply better. If I'm Dallas, I do take a little bit of souls and a little bit of hope in the fact that I've outscored this Boston team. 151 to 105 in the last five quarters, and the fact that I can score in the paint now, Porzingis not there. But Boston had, you know, only shot 48 percent from layups and dunks in Game Four. That's not going to happen again. They're winning tonight. The Dano wants back not in. Because they're Sounds like you took umbrage team. with the Tone, hot take from David. Tone, Please. I, I just want to provide the proper context about the graduate comment to both Frank and David, which is. They had blown a 21-point lead, and it was down to three points. And he was telling his Mm. guys, hey, this is where we can show people we've we've grown from the team that we were in previous years. And they did close out the deal in that specific game in Game 3. Make a pick tonight, George Sedano. Boston. David, you just said Boston, and that would be their championship. Although you're not giving them the credit of being a dominant team. You're giving them the credit of beating the teams that they play against. Frank Isola tonight. Get in all mutes. We'll move on. The thrilling, dramatic U.S. Open. Let's go there. Crowning for Bryson DeChambeau. Brutal for Rory McIlroy. His missed putts on 16 and 18. We're from two. shot one of the greatest of his career he said and the way he won over the crowd and took the trophy for a few victory laps around the horn Israel Gutierrez on the headline from this U.S. Open to me it has to be about Rory McIlroy and look I I know Bryson DeChambeau looked like a a crowd favorite there but over the last several years Rory McIlroy has been sort of the people's golfer right he's been the guy that people really like and he's been trying to get this major drought done for so long and he was right there you guys mentioned 16 and 18 15 he flew it over the green uh, in a par three and ended up getting a bogey there also he had his opportunity sitting right in front of him at 16 missing that three foot putt he hadn't missed one of those all season it felt like just the adrenaline and everything was just too much for him down the stretch and he absolutely choked that away DeShambo, it does a lot for his reputation it does a lot for his you know standing with the fans you know winning one for the us of a but in reality rory rory's been around longer he's been a more accomplished golfer and he absolutely choked that one away that one was hard to watch david your headline from this open 496 is the number I cannot get out of my head. Roy McIlroy has made 496 of 496 putts within three feet this year. And to miss two of those at the very end of this major, to, to uh, have a situation where you now have four major runner-ups uh, in your career and the second player in 40 years to have two consecutive years of runner up by one stroke is We use this word a lot. It should be banned, but this is actually heartbreaking. Watching him in the back react to that video in real time. I know there's a lot of, you know, uh, pushback about the fact he didn't have a press conference, but we saw the emotion, the raw emotion, the actual heartbreak of him seeing that slip through his fingers. This is one of those just devastating moments in sports that I just would never forget. It was actually getting hard to watch the more that that video of him in the back was uh, scrolling through the timeline. Tony, I'm not going to say he Vandevelded it, but it, it, it's in the ballpark is what I would say, unfortunately. And I, I think the fact he didn't do the press conference, when David says much was made out of that, understandably so, because he's normally not the guy that's going to walk away from those situations. But it goes to show you the agony, right, that he is going through at that particular moment, that he couldn't bring himself to have those conversations. And he's certainly, again, a guy who is great at the podium, Win or lose, he's a guy that is there, and you get to see those emotions. The fact that he was that upset that he walked away really speaks volumes to me. And Frank Isola. I love that old uh, golf saying, you know, drive for show, putt for dough, and you see Rory right there. If he makes that putt, that puts all the pressure on DeChambeau. And one thing about not talking to the media, unless he had something going on in his life where he couldn't 
you have to sit there. I'm sorry and answer questions, especially since you've been pretty outspoken, especially about the, the Live Tour. Remember this as well. This whole thing about Live versus PGA, moments like uh, yesterday, it's Father's Day. A lot of casuals just watch the four majors. A lot of casual golf fans watch the Masters and the U.S. Open. That ending was huge for golf because that was as dramatic as you're going to get. And give DeChambeau a lot of credit. That shot out of the sand was absolutely terrific. Gutierrez's last word after the one. I want to give Rory a little bit of a pass for not doing the press conference. He has spoken for golf for so long, for the PGA, for these last few years. This heartbreaking time, like you mentioned, I don't blame him that much. I give him a bit of a Dennis pass. Dennis Jr., 7. Gutierrez, 11. Frank Isola, 8. George Sedano, a good no looking comment. panel today, I'm not guys. Talking. I love the cut of your jibs today. The boys are out tonight, huh? Buy yourself next. It's a ball night. Fever 91, Sky 83, Aaliyah Boston looking like Aaliyah Boston again. And it's got Indiana on a win streak. The heat in this rivalry also showing up again. Angel Reese on Caitlin Clark. Flagrant one was the call. Here's the postgame. A basketball player. I can't control the refs. I guess some people got a special whistle. It's just a part of basketball. It is what it is. Um, you know, she's trying to play, make a play on the ball and, and, and get the block. Um, but yeah, I mean, it happens. Frank, what you buy, what you sell from the game? I don't understand when she says special whistle. That's clearly a flagrant foul. I think it came down for the referees. Was it a flagrant one or a flagrant two, which of course is an ejection. She also got a little combative with the questions. Well, hang on. You said you wanted to be the villain. And let's remember, the last two times, this, uh, the last time these teams met, uh, Clark was on the receiving end of a dead ball flagrant foul, and you stood up and clapped. Now you're fouling here. So the reporters are obviously going to ask Okay, but, but the basketball play here, you thought that was a villain move? You thought that was a, an ejection-worthy no, foul? No, no. Well, I did not say that. It's a wind-up, and I think the referees got it okay. right. It was a flagrant foul. Everyone move on. George Sedano? Yeah, I agree with the flagrant one, Tony, but I think the thing that I'm looking at when I see Angel Reese, and she's an incredible defender, I think that she may be taking this whole villain role thing a little too much to heart because it creates perhaps at times some undiscipline defensively, and I think she tries to go for the spectacular play perhaps a little too often depending on the situation, and I think to me that's the thing that has stood out the most in her play. There are times she's incredible defensively, and then there are times she's a bit undisciplined, and maybe that's a rookie thing too. David Dennis Jr.? Well, I mean, I'm not sure if, if Angel Reese is taking on the villain role or if she's being vilified. Look at the headlines from last night, acting like she assaulted Kaitlyn Clark for just committing an on-ball foul that, you know, hit her in the head. It was a flagrant one, of course, but that's what it was. What I'm actually most interested in is the actual rivalry on the court and the fact that right now we may actually have a rookie of the year race between the two of them. A couple years, a couple weeks ago, it felt like Kaitlyn Clark was running away with it, but she's had some up and down games. Right now, Angel Reese leads rookies and rebounds, PER, win shares, double doubles, and they have a real rookie of the year competition. I would still put it with Kaitlyn Clark right now, but if they continue to play like this, we may go down to the wire at the end of the series, at the end of the season, and that's compelling. And Israel Gutierrez. Tony, I'm trying to figure out, uh, Frank, how you block the ball without winding up. Like, if Angel Reese sends that 10 uh, rows into the stands, does she do it without the wind-up? It, it was just an accident. Uh, she was going for the ball. She got she the hit head. She hit her in the I head. Think it was a she flagrant hit her in, one. She didn't get the Two ball. David's, it went, and it was a flagrant one. There wouldn't, shouldn't be any further discussion. But to David's point right. here, the, remember when we talked about Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson, and this is the rivalry that's going to happen in the WNBA, and put, some people said, well, they don't play the same position. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't <laughs> matter. Every answer, yeah. time these two have yeah. some sort of exchange, we're going to be discussing it. Yeah. We'll move on. Buy or sell two. Another off day for Oilers Panthers. The awakening of Edmonton in game four. They had eight goals. But is it too little, too late? Israel, what to buy, what to sell today from this series? The 8 1 win for Edmonton over the weekend. Well, I'm buying the momentum swinging to Edmonton only because this is the exact way they are supposed to win. This is the fear you had if you were the Florida Panthers. You can see the odd man rushes coming before they show up because they're so physically talented. So it scares you a little bit and it gives Edmonton some confidence. I still believe the Panthers will pull this out, but it is the last time. It's, if you would have lost one nothing, you'd be perfectly happy. Eight to All one. All right, this is this. I love this totally debate. Whether, oh, I'd rather lose uh, one, uh, eight one over one nothing. Frank Isola, you saw Edmonton wake up for the first time this series. What does it mean? 
Well, I thought just like there was a lot of give up in the Celtics, I think there was a lot of give up in the Florida Panthers. When you're up 3-0 in a series with a chance to win at home, it was about time Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid did something. But I got a lot of faith in Bombrowski and goal, so I'm not worried about the Florida Panthers. Sedano? Tone, who knew the scriptwriters in the NHL were cheating off the NBA the way this series is going right now? I would have never guessed that would have been the case. Uh, but ultimately, look, I look at it this way. This isn't soccer. It's not an aggregate. It's not going to help the Oilers. Bobrovsky had a similar situation where he gave up five goals against the Rangers, and the Panthers came back and won. The Panthers are clearly the better team from top to bottom, so I feel confident the Panthers will okay, close. Okay, and David Dennis Jr. Yeah, obviously the Panthers are still favored, but of the two final series, I think the Oilers have a better chance of making this competitive than the Mavs doing the counterparts in the NBA. And it comes down to the part of the series, Tony, that you know I've been following very closely. It's the goalies. It's Bobrovsky. <laughs> this is the thing that is, I'm locked in on. He had a 95 All right, you finally the learned the error of your ways. Five out of 16. If they can get Andy, through Bobrovsky here and do something, this got can a little become time on a the series. bench in the middle of that game. Although... If yeah. Florida were to win, are you going to go after them saying, well, they only beat the teams that they beat, and this is not proof that they're oh! better? Oh! Wow! Oh! <laughs> you can say that about every champion, wow. David. We'll move on. Mookie Betts, broken bone in the hand after that hit-by-pitch. Team says it's not season-ending. Yoshinubo, Yamamoto, strain rotator cuff IL for him, too. George, buy or sell alarm for the first-place Los Angeles Dodgers. I don't know if I'd sound the alarm, Tony, but there is some concern. There's a reason Mookie Betts is playing shortstop because they don't have anyone there that they feel confident mm, yeah. in in a day-to-day -day basis. Miguel Rojas is a good defensive shortstop, but is light on the bat. They have a kid in Miguel Vargas who they could bring up that could potentially play there too. And then on the pitching staff, they had been fantastic, but they're still figuring out the Walker Bueller stuff. Kershaw's making minor league starts, so I'm a, a little worried, I would David say. Dennis Tiny Jr. Bit. I'm not too terribly worried. They have enough of a cushion in their division. He'll be back uh, before the end of the season. I think they can tread water long enough that when they're in full health, they'll run through uh, their part of the league as much as people have anticipated at the beginning of the series. Real Gutierrez. You're going through your most tumultuous time of the season, and yet Mookie Betts not season ending. Yamamoto doesn't need surgery. Kershaw's coming back. You've got an eight game cushion. Heck, you're even moving probably Otani up a spot in the lineup and maybe get a couple extra at bats from him. If this is the worst it's going to be, they're going to survive. Frank this Isola. Spot. I feel bad for Mookie Betts, but come on, no one else in that division is above 500. The bigger one is Yamamoto, who remember about 10 days ago, look at the way that he pitched against the Yankees. This guy has a chance to be a star, but he's got to be out there. That injury is a major That's concern. You're more concerned than the Betts to be MVP this year. All right. Gutierrez and Sedano are advancing, but you got to question who they played while getting to showdown, right? David Dennis Jr.? Yeah, just Frank. <laughs> oh, wow, again? Yeah, well, I mean, I've heard okay, this before. Magic, you you can say this about every room. team, but it seems like it's been said about this Celtics team more than other teams. <laughs> we'll take a break. Showdown next. Bears in the season only done six times before. Ronel Blanco on the doorstep of history, pulled after seven innings and 94 pitches yesterday. He said through an interpreter afterwards, he threw a lot of pitches, wasn't going to be able to finish, so he just accepted it. He was still a dozen pitches below this season high, Israel. Should Joe Espada and the Astros have let Blanco try for history? No, Tony, and here's why. He's actually part of a more exclusive club now. His teammate, Fran Valdez and him are the only two pitchers to have thrown seven or more innings with hitless baseball twice in a season without having multiple no-hitters. Look at that. That's not a good club at all. And George yes, it is. It's only two people. Tone, I feel like I feel like every sport is trying to take the fun out of the regular season, making it more and more meaningless. There's 162 games. Give us something to wish for, yeah. something to look forward to in the regular I season. I understand this be pitch count. Yada. He's still a dozen away from where you just go out in the eighth and see if he gets through it in three or five or ten pitches. We'll move on. Euros underway in Germany. A huge upset today. Slovakia over Belgium. What did Slovakian fans rip up waffles? I don't know, because I'm here to talk about the Albanians breaking spaghetti in front of Italians. And Austrians breaking baguettes in the face of the French. George, are fans going too far or not far enough? Oh, Tone, not far enough. Let's keep adding it. You know what? I'm Cuban. If Cuba was involved, are we are we, are we we just throwing out the fried plantains? What are we doing here? Like, just give Capacino. me more. Give me more food. No, they started off by going too far. I don't care about a baguette. Yeah. 
If you give me a carbonara where my spaghetti is cut in half and I can't roll it around on that fork and eat it that way, get out of here. Send it back. Right, baguettes are supposed to be broken. You're right. You can't do that to spaghetti. It's a sin against God and life. Take it, Israel. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Clay Thompson not having the best of weekends. He unfollowed the Warriors, got rid of all his photos from his history there, winning four rings because, you know, passive aggressive contract negotiations. He also got trolled by a fan he was just trying to give advice to who reminded him that he was 0 for 10 the last time we saw him on the floor. Here's the thing about Clay Thompson. If I told you he had his career high 301 three-pointers made last season and shot 41%, you'd know that guy has still got more basketball. And rightfully so for his defense the complaining to the referees, he was locked in in game four, especially on the defensive end. You need your leaders in moments like this. If Dallas is going to win, they're going to need a huge effort from Luka Doncic. This will be the toughest game of the year for them to, for them to win, but I still think they have the best player in the series. That's why I give them a punch. Oh, here we go now. All right, so we talked about the psyche of Boston. Israel, you can go there as well, but as we look forward to game five tonight, any carryover from what we saw Friday night, in the way Boston laid that egg, in the way Dallas came back. Well, I'll start with Tatum here. And look, I'm all about having perspective on things, on life and sports, etc. Not right here, not out loud. We know it's not going to be the end of the world if you don't win game five. We know that. But I don't want to hear that from my main player, my leader, the guy who, when things are tight, we're supposed to turn to you. And frankly, so far, you have not been that player yet. So I would rather, uh, and maybe this is my bias coming through, but I would rather have somebody like Jimmy Butler give me empty guarantees every single time because I know where his mentality is versus Jason Tatum, who just came off of that game four performance with his team. So we'll see how that carries over. I don't think it's going to mean much. What I do think is they have a history of losing big games in Boston. Lost a game, you know, game seven last year. And so if you think about any of these other Dallas Mavericks players, a P.J. Washington here, another maybe Tim Hardaway uh, boost of a shooting performance, anybody comes up and surprises the Mavericks along with Luka and Kyrie performing the way they should in this game, they could lose this game. They could lose this game very easily, so that I want to hear the exact opposite. Okay, Jason. well, here we go. Now I'm hearing two panelists who, who are leaning, it seems like, towards Dallas, suggesting there's a path to victory here. David, how'd you hear Tatum? How do you view Boston going into tonight? I, I actually do want to go back to that Jalen Brown quote again that, that Sedano mentioned where he said, we graduated. And I'm wondering, who did they actually graduate into? Because they look like the exact same Boston Celtics team that blows leads, that comes up and doesn't show up for these big games, that lost to Miami and lost to Golden State in series that they probably should have won. What I'm well, seeing... They, they, they had won 10 straight going into Friday night's game, David Dennis Jr. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they have been winning those, but they've been playing worse teams. That's the thing. They they are the same Celtics team. They just have the benefit of playing teams that are not nearly oh, as good as them, which is why they're going to win this series. Here we go. They're beating the people who are in front of them, including a Dallas Mavericks squad that's not as good as them. So they can afford to have these stinker games and miss a whole bunch of shots in game two and blow leads in game one and game three. They're going to win tonight because they're simply better. If I'm Dallas, I do take a little bit of souls and a little bit of hope in the fact that I've outscored this Boston team 151 to 105 in the last five quarters and the fact that I can score in the paint now Porzingis not there but Boston had you know only shot 48 percent from layups and dunks in game four that's not going to happen again they're winning tonight the Dano wants back not in because they're sounds like you took umbrage with the hot Tone. take from David Tone. please I, I just want to provide the proper context about the graduate comment to both Frank and David, which is they had blown a 21-point lead, and it was down to three points. And he was telling his mm. guys, hey, That's this David's is where point. we can show people we've, we've grown from the team that we were in previous years. And they did close out the deal in that specific game in game Make three. a pick tonight, George Sedano. Boston. David, you just said Boston. And that would be their championship. But, though you're not giving them the credit of being a dominant team. You're giving them the credit of beating the teams that they play against. Frank Isola tonight. Unless Kyrie has a huge game, it's going to be Boston. And Israel Gutierrez. I'm going to continue to vo motivate the Celtics by picking the Mavericks. Okay. <laughs> I see what you're doing. <laughs> you guys are getting all mutes. We'll move on. The thrilling, dramatic U.S. Open. Let's go there. Crowning for Bryson DeChambeau. Brutal for Rory McIlroy. His missed putts on 16 and 18. 
We're from two and a half feet and three and a half feet. You never see that. The camera's on him as DeChambeau clinched, and again, as he drove off. You don't see that often either. For DeChambeau, his second U.S. Open, the crowning achievement, the way he won, that bunker shot, one of the greatest of his career, he said, and the way he won over the crowd and took the trophy for a few victory laps. Around the horn, Israel Gutierrez on the headline from this U.S. Open. To me, it has to be about Rory McIlroy. And look, I, I know Bryson DeChambeau looked like a, a crowd favorite there. But over the last several years, Rory McIlroy has been sort of the people's golfer, right? He's been the guy that people really like. And he's been trying to get this major drought done for so long. And he was right there. You guys mentioned 16 and 18. 15, he flew it over the green uh, in a par three and ended up getting a bogey there. Also, he had his opportunity sitting right in front of him at 16, missing that three-foot putt. He hadn't missed one of those all season. It felt like just the adrenaline and everything was just too much for him down the stretch, and he absolutely choked that away. DeShambo, it does a lot for his reputation. It does a lot for his, you know, standing with the fans, you know, winning one for the U.S. of A., but in reality, Rory, Rory's been around longer. He's been a more accomplished golfer, and he absolutely choked that one away. That one was hard to watch. David, your headline from this open? 496 is the number I cannot get out of my head. Rory McIlroy has made 496 of 496 putts within three feet this year. And to miss two of those at the very end of this major to, to uh, have a situation where you now have four major runner-ups uh, in your career and the second player in 40 years to have two consecutive years of runner-up by one stroke is, we use this word a lot, it should be banned, but this is actually heartbreaking. Watching him in the back react to that video in real time. I know there's a lot of, you know, uh, pushback about the fact he didn't have a press conference, but we saw the emotion, the raw emotion, the actual heartbreak of him seeing that slip through his fingers. This is one of those just devastating moments in sports that I just will never forget. It was actually getting hard to watch the more that that video of him in the back was uh, scrolling through the timeline. Dano. Tony, I'm not going to say he Vandeveld it, but it, it, it's in the ballpark is what I would say, unfortunately. And I, I think the fact he didn't do the press conference, when David says much was made out of that, understandably so, because he's normally not the guy that's going to walk away from those situations. But it goes to show you the agony, right, that he is going through at that particular moment, that he couldn't bring himself to have those conversations. And he's certainly, again, a guy who is great at the podium, win or lose. He's a guy that is there, and you get to see those emotions. The fact that he was that upset that he walked away really speaks volumes to me. And Frank Isola. I love that old uh, golf saying, you know, drive for show, putt for dough. And you see Rory right there. If he makes that putt, that puts all the pressure on DeChambeau. And one thing about not talking to the media, unless he had something going on in his life where he couldn't, you have to sit there. I'm sorry and answer questions, especially since mm. you've been pretty outspoken, especially about the, the Live Tour. Remember this as well. This whole thing about Live versus PGA, moments like uh, yesterday, it's Father's Day. A lot of casuals just watch the four majors. A lot of casual golf fans watch the Masters and the U.S. Open. That ending was huge for golf because that was as dramatic as you're going to get. And give DeChambeau a lot of credit. That shot out of the sand was absolutely mm -hmm. terrific. Gutierrez's last word after the one. I want to give Rory a little bit of a pass for not doing the press conference. He has spoken for golf for so long, for the PGA, for these last few years. This heartbreaking time, like you mentioned, I don't blame him that much. I give him a bit of a Dennis pass. Dennis Jr., 7. Gutierrez, 11. Frank Isola, 8. George Fever, 91. Sky, 83. Aaliyah Boston looking like Aaliyah Boston again. And it's got Indiana on a win streak. The heat in this rivalry also showing up again. Angel Reese on Caitlin Clark. Flagrant one was the call. Here's the post game. It's a basketball play. I can't control the refs. I guess some people got a special whistle. It's just a part of basketball. It is what it is. Um, you know, she's trying to play, make a play on the ball and, and, and get the block. Um, but yeah, I mean, it happens. Frank, what you buy, what you sell from the game? I don't understand when she says special whistle. That's clearly a flagrant foul. I think it came down for the referees. Was it a flagrant one or a flagrant two, which of course.